Welcome to another Naval News video. Today's video comes at us from USNI News. That's usni.org. I recommend y'all go over there and check it out. It's a really good website. Uh, this piece is written by Miss Mallory Shelborn, and she writes, the House Armed Services Committee, Mark, says Navy can shed nine littoral combat ships uh, and save four amphibious ships. So this is a big reversal from our last video that was just a few days ago. So we're gonna go ahead and get into it right after a word from our sponsor. Thank you to YouGov for sponsoring today's video. Have you seen how expensive gas is at the pump? It's crazy. I found an easy way to earn cash and gift cards for just sharing my opinion. At YouGov.com, you take online surveys for cash. YouGov.com pays me for my opinion on products, brands, and politics. I love having a second source of income every month. It really makes a difference. I use the money from YouGov to pay for gas. It feels great being able to fill up the tank using extra cash I earned online. Click the link in my description and start earning money today. All right, so House Armed Services Committee Chairman Mark says uh, Navy can shed those littoral combat ships that it wants to, but it must save for amphib ships for marine operations. And there's a little more to it than that, but let's first read from the piece written by Ms. Shelbourne. Uh, she writes, the House Armed Services Committee Chairman's Mark would allow the Navy to retire its nine littoral combat ships as scheduled. Uh, as a draft of the bill obtained by USNI News does not prevent the Navy from decommissioning the Freedom Class services asked to retire in uh, next year fisc uh, fiscal year budget 2023. Uh, the subject of LCS decommissioning quickly became a hot button issue among lawmakers, including some who criticized the Navy's plans to retire almost new ships from service because the youngest of the ones on the chopping block to be decommissioned uh, was built in August 2020 you know, about two years ago. It's a very short life for a very expensive ship. So Congress, you know, without perhaps knowing all the details as to why they need to be decommissioned and why that would save us money, uh, they, their initial reaction was, of course, you can't decommission these ships, you know, but once they got the full details, someone, you know, explained it to them, it sounds like, uh, now this week, they're going to adopt a draft written on Wednesday uh, to allow the Navy to go ahead and de decommission those. But let's go back to the piece. Uh, the House Armed Services Committee is slated to mark up Chairman Admiral Smith's from Washington uh, draft to the bill on Wednesday when uh, members could offer amendments that would alter the Navy's plans for the LCSs. And one of the other plans would be to move it into like, a, you know, a Naval Reserve status or decommission it, but then sell it to other countries if they're interested in these ships, because these ships do have a role. They just don't have a role inside the U.S. Navy. So, so maybe somebody can uh, find a use for these ships. Uh, the House Armed Services Committee Chairman's Mark differs from both the Senate Armed Services Committee's Mark in its policy bill and the House Appropriations Defense Subcommittee Mark uh, for fiscal year 2023 defense bill spending. Draft legislations from both those panels would mandate, uh, mandate the service of keeping five LCSs going, but it doesn't say which five of the nine uh, would, would they keep, you know, maybe that's up to the Navy. Uh, the bill doesn't go into that much detail. But after Wednesday, if this all goes through, the Navy will be able to decommission uh, all nine of its Freedom Class LCSs, which is great. But there's more to the story here. And let's see if we can get to it. She says, uh, like the House Armed Service Committee Sea Power Projection Forces Subcommittee Mark, uh, the HASC Chairman's Mark met the Navy's request for shipbuilding account and authorized eight Battle Force ships. So they're still going to go ahead and build two Early Burke, two Virginia class, and one frigate, and then a bunch of support ships, uh, which is good. But what about the Ticonderoga cruisers? Um, Chairman's Mark also followed C. Powers panel mark in saving one Ticonderoga class guided missile cruiser um, and four Whidbey Island uh, class dock landing ships for decommissioning. So the cruiser, the Vitzburg, has been in modernization dry dock, if you will, uh, for years, getting all this new equipment put on it. And right as she's about to come out of dry dock, they were also uh, scheduled to decommission her, which wouldn't make a lot of sense because you just modernized her. So th now that the money has been spent and the work has been done and all the training and equipment are on board the ship now with the sailors ready to go, we might as well use the v Vicksburg for a few more years just to, you know, get some return on that investment, right? 
Uh, so it looks like they are going to do that. Now, the interesting thing is, is the Vic, if this is true, and if they go with this program, uh, the Vicksburg is going to be the only Ticonderoga in the Navy. And anytime you have one ship of a specific class in the Navy, the supply chain for that becomes an issue because it's a, it's a, it's a niche. It's a boutique uh, de- demand. You know, uh, whenever you have 10 ships, you can have a larger supply pool and get parts to the ship much more efficiently and cheaply. Uh, whereas if you just have one, that tends to ratchet up the cost and delay the time a little bit because you may not always have the parts ready to go when you need them. We'll see how that plays out. Um, back to the piece, she says the LSDs, the Navy asked to retire, would need to keep such a uh, chairman's mark to become law. And those are the Germantown, the Gunston Hall, the Tortuga, and the Ashland. Those are the LCS, LSDs rather, that they want to save. Uh, I was hoping they would have a picture of those. Those are really cool looking ships. Basically, those are what we carry, one of the types of ships we use to carry the Marines around in across the oceans. And then they get out in their little, you know, amphibious craft and they go to the beach, right? That's you know, think of it as a taxi service, if you will. All right. The chairman's mark would also prevent the Navy from deactivating its land-based EA-18G Growler squadrons from placing electronic uh, attack aircraft into storage. So what they want to do is they want to have, um, you know, the five squadrons that are 25 Growlers in service and move them over to the, uh, what does it say here, the Naval Reserve and have the Naval Reserve or the Air Force Reserve uh, operate these. And that's just another way of getting these, uh, these planes a little more life. You know, you don't need to go from operational service, even though it's land-based and in the Navy, you know, a lot of people, a lot of countries call that the Air Force, but we, we could still have land-based uh, planes operating in the Navy. But they just, instead of getting rid of them, just move them down to the reserves and let them operate them for a little while. And I think that makes sense. So I'm giving a lot of credit here to, uh, to Congress in general, because they seem to be correcting what at first looked like to be some terrible mistakes, not going along with the Navy's plan to decommission the freedom class. And, you know, and then the Navy went too far in trying to decommission all those LSD ships for carrying the Marines around. So Congress is saying, Hey, why don't you keep those ships and we'll go ahead and decommission all the freedom class kind of a tit for tat. And I think keeping the growlers in some form of operation, you know, even though it's not the Navy, it's going to be the reserves, I think is a good idea because this is a very powerful asset in, in our war chest here. And I'm not going to go into why that is just know that it is very important to us. So uh, given credit where credit's due here, good job to Congress for getting this one right. Okay. Uh, we'll always point out when the Navy makes mistakes and Congress makes boneheaded you know, decisions and we'll make videos on those, but whenever they get them right, we'll give them credit as well. All right. Well, this has been a short one, but I appreciate your time, everybody. We'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Take care.